slightly strange moment when Sir Mark Rowley, who's the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, seemed to get agitated with the journalist. Uh, take a look at this. Are we going to end two-tier policing, sir? So just for people who are listening rather than watching, uh, you, people watching will have seen that Sir Mark Rowley sort of grabbed the microphone and kind of threw it down. Uh, he was clearly frustrated there. Um, uh, Brian, I wonder what you make of that, because of course Sir Mark Rowley is someone who has to give an example to his officers to stay calm even in a face of, of major danger, and all that was was a journalist asking him a question. Look, I'm not going to sit here and answer for Sir Mark, Mark Rowley. And He's no doubt under a lot of pressure, you know, at the moment to get the country straight. Again, I'm not, I've seen that little clip there, but it'd be nothing that concerned me. I think we've got bigger issues to comment about. When you talk about, if I could go to your point around two-tier police. Yes, of course. I, I think Keir Starmer um, was absolutely nailed it. He couldn't have said it better as if I were going to say it myself, you know. The police are there to police without fear or favour. Does that always happen, though? Because we've often seen uh, officers not not intervening, for example, in the pro-Palestinian protests in London, where there are people clearly breaking the law, clearly glorifying terrorism. We've, there's loads of evidence of that. I'm not saying that's like a riot situation. It's clearly very different. But nonetheless, there are there is this perception. I mean, can you understand why the perception is there? Or is there just no reason for that, do you think? No, I can understand the perception, but it's probably a lack of understanding around police tactics and how we police sensitive situations. My colleagues have been used by used as political uh, punch bags for the last few years. You know, one minute we're too heavy-handed, next minute we're too, we're too soft. Each commander at police's incidents has to choose from a range of tactics on how they're going to approach that policing operation. But if, they're saying, but if people are criticising you, Brian, for saying you're too heavy-handed and also you're too soft, I mean, surely that is some level of evidence of dealing with different political, dealing with different policing situations in different ways. Your officers, I'm not blaming your officers individually, you're, you're standing up for the rank and file. You're essentially the union of the, of the police officers, but the commanders, are they not instituting a form of two-tier policing because Keir Starmer says it doesn't exist but I mean it seems to me you might be hinting at the fact that it's the decisions higher up the chain that influence how people look at these things. It depends on your points of view from where you're standing from the argument. There, there's some people who will it's almost like is the cat looking out of the cupboard or into the cupboard you know that kind of argument. You, you were too heavy-handed with me, or you're not. Depends on which side of the fence you sat at the time. But but surely, you know? but surely it's so straightforward. If if they're policing without fear and favour, exactly the same thing should happen in every single situation where uh, someone is breaking the law in a particular way. And there are lots of people who really do see that. Look, I I totally support you and your officers in arresting people who are involved in these riots. There's absolutely no excuse for it whatsoever. They should be uh, arrested. They should be uh, face the full force of the law. But I also see in a lot of our viewers and listeners see as well, police officers not intervening when other things happen, especially with other groups. The law says we have to be proportionate in every action we take. All I'll say is a judgment has to be made at that time on the streets. And it's very easy in cold light of day without the, the context or seeing what's going around to make judgment on that. It's very difficult for my officers and they're doing an absolute sterling job and I'm not going to sit here and criticise them. What is your message to rioters? What is your message to someone who might be thinking, right, four o'clock in the afternoon, a few, a few hours' time, might head out and uh, throw a few bricks or bottles at the police. Uh, we don't want anybody to do that, of course. We can never, ever condone it. If someone's thinking of doing that today, maybe they're listening or watching this, what's your message to them, Brian? Just think about what you're doing. You're attacking police officers that are there to protect you and look after you and your family. You injure them officers and they don't go home then shame on you. There's also a massive cost here, and the cost is to the public, the cost is to my colleagues and their welfare and their families. Someone will have to pay, but ultimately, the offenders will be brought to justice, and they need to think twice because this will have an impact on the rest of your life. Stay at home, don't get involved. There are democratic ways and avenues to deal with your discontent and that's through your police and crime commissioners and through your MPs, but it's not by attacking police lines. Just, Brian, on your officers who you've clearly stood up very, very strongly for today, are you? do you feel you, do you feel they are getting enough support from the government? 
So Kia's come out quite strong saying he'll support police officers to use force. I want to see the proof in the pudding because time and time again, as I've already said to you, I've seen my colleagues vilified for using split second decision force and it's ended up making officers wary about using force. I want to see this government be strong, support the police officers, recognise they do a hard job. And when this all calms down, I want them to consider how they pay them in their terms and conditions. But it's not an appropriate time to talk about it now. But just think on how they've treated the police officers over the last decade. OK, um, Brian, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. That's Brian Booth there. He's the acting deputy national chairman of the Police Federation of England and Wales.